Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco dish out on the movies. And today we are back doing May Mayberry Mighty Mash, a continuation of what we've already started doing a few days ago. We have four exciting matchups. Mrs. Sprigg, Howard's mother, versus the blonde Mary Simpson, a, a nurse who Andy Griffith courted for two seconds in season four. Sergeant Vince Carter from the Re Marine Corps versus Reverend Tucker. Governor Ed of the state of North Carolina versus Trey Bowden, Bowden, sorry, a child who comes into Opie's life and starts uh, cozying up to his dad and he gets jealous about that. It's really nothing big, but he still gets jealous. It's about the one of the only times we've seen a really evil side of Opie, which is very rare. And Charlie Foley, Mayberry Town Grocer, versus Flint Conroy, football coach. Flip, doesn't it flip? Flip, yes. not Flint. Flip. I made that mistake looking him up. I thought he was Flint. Because I've never heard of anybody named Flip, be Flip before. Well, there was a famous comedian back in, uh, several years ago named Flip Wilson. He's an African-American comedian. He was really good. I think he's passed away since then, but his name was Flip. I think that's the only other Flip I, I know, anyway. Okay. Well, I hope you don't flip out after you lose. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> okay, the first match is going to be Mrs. Sprague versus the blonde Mary Simpson. Now, Mrs. Sprague is Howard's mother, and she was in a few episodes. The one that we watched where she was in it for a, a lengthy period of time was called The Lodge. It was a color episode of episode two, season seven. That was the one that I, I chose that episode to be her episode because, in my opinion, it's the one that shows her character the most. Uh, definitely shows her full character. Uh, whereas, like, there's other episodes like Dinner Eight, my favorite episode of all time, and in that episode, she's just there. And so I, I chose the Lodge episode because she was really the villain of it. Okay, and Mary, the blonde Mary Simpson is her, she's Nurse Mary. She's either a nurse or she's a health educator. She's a nurse, a county nurse. Okay, and she is in the episode, only one episode, called Three's a Crowd. And it is episode 27 of season 2. Okay, so I have Mary the blonde Simpson. Mary Simpson, and I keep I want to uh, be clear about this. There's two the reason Mary why Simpsons. that's right. One, the, the, I'm doing the blonde. There was an actual brunette. There's a brunette, and she's in the tournament too. Okay, so that's why that's another reason why we're distinguishing it, it because there's a nut, the other one is in the tournament too. Okay, so. Um, I believe the blonde Mary Simpson will be, will prevail over Mrs. Sprague for many different reasons. She is very polite, and she's kind of a girly girl. So she's just going to politely go up to her and stab her in the chest. <laughs> That's but very polite she, of her. But she has very strong fingernails. She actually helps Andy break the string of his guitar while he's trying to teach her how to no, play that was it. Him, remember? Well, they were both together. They were and both together, and Andy uh, was at his wit's end with what was going on with Barney, and uh, he played it, and it just broke, and she didn't say anything because she knew that he was upset already, and, and it's going to cost a lot of money to replace all the strings. I, I was confused about this moment, too. I didn't know if it was her or him at first. 
she in the this episode which is the only episode she's in she's very adaptable to everything that's going on because Varney keeps coming over and bothering them in fact that's probably the funniest thing about this and the and the most significant thing was it was really about Barney bothering them all the time and never giving them a moment to themselves and um even in the end he miss Andy says we I want to be alone because I want to talk to her about things and he thinks he wants to ask her to marry him and he gets this whole party together and they go interrupt them in uh this uh parking place where they're going to kiss and with everybody's got food and there's I mean it's like a huge party because they think they're going to get married they think he popped the question so it's, what what does this have to do with what it the, what it has to do with is uh in this episode well I don't know it's uh kind of back it's way back in the beginning of the well, those of the were, whole series. Those were the best episodes. So. But the, anyway, the focus is really on Barney. But still, she he wants to court her. He even says it in the end. I, I want to court you, and you and only she see disappears. her. She disappears. She disappears like some of these wow. other people. <laughs> Creepy. We think there's a black hole at the end of Mayberry, and somehow either they are magnetically attracted to the black hole and they fall in. Somebody pushes them in. Nope. Or we don't know what's going on. I, I have a much darker theory that involves Virgil, Ernest, and Regis. So anyway, she disappears. So that's why I said she and Andy, he courts her for two seconds during this season. Or the whole, the whole series, actually. So anyway, I think because she has very strong fingernails, she has a medical background, she's very adaptable, all the boys like her, that she would prevail over the despicable Mrs. Sprague. And I say Miss Despicable because she is so manipulative and she lies and she's totally dependent on her son. She's the exact candidate that would win this competition. I don't agree at all. <laughs> I think that Mary Simpson would use her beautifully uh, manicured nails and push her over in, in two seconds just by using just by using her the tips of her fingernails because Mrs. Sprague is so consumed with her son she can't see what's going on around her and see that people don't respect her. They don't like her. In fact, they well, make fun of her. She's oblivious to everything that's going on she because is. she's at home all the time. Well, we don't... We don't yes, we do. I guess we do know she's at home all the time. Well, except when she gets Howard to take her somewhere. Well, except later in the series where she magically meets this guy in another town... In and another magic, town. Magically having a relationship with him and magically deciding to marry him uh, after we never see that in the series at all. Of course, we don't want to get into the continuity crap because <laughs> we'd be here for hours trashing yes. the bad continuity. This show had actually had, had an employee who was called the continuity person. And what does continuity mean? It means everything is uh, makes sense and together. And uh, the things that happened in this series, people disappeared. No one talks about their disappearance. P characters have been on forever. Like, like, uh, uh, well, they did well, talk we, about we don't Barney. Need to get into that. But anyway, this is another uh, example of a continuity crisis with Mrs. Sprague. But anyway, I think she's just so oblivious of anything. She probably, if they're having a huge breakout of problems in Mayberry where everybody's against each other she wouldn't even know because she's at home waiting for her son and um, uh, she's just oblivious and I think uh, Mary Simpson is really smart and she's younger and she's very adaptable and that's a good that's a good quality to have Mrs. Sprague is not adaptable at know? all because t she's just so all she cares about, she's just absorbed she, totally with her she, son. She adapted to her son joining the lodge after the end of the episode. Of course, if this was real life, she would probably continue to sabotage and continue to not support him in doing that. But we're going off what's in the show only. 
So yeah. I think that's why I think of the blonde Mary Simpson would win over because she is um, because of all these uh, characteristics. Well, that I, I think said. that Mary Simpson. You're saying that she's nice, right? She's very polite. She's very polite and very nice, but I think she's very strong, no, too. No, she's not. She's not strong. No, I think she is. Come on. She can't even speak up to Barney herself just because she he, she's Andy's friend. Well, I think she, she thinks Andy should up. do that, and Andy should, should have done I that. I think that both of them should, and so I think that shows that she's weak. No, I don't agree and at all. That she, she's polite, but here's here's the thing. She's polite, but not with malicious intent. I don't, I don't know if, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, no, I think she's just, uh, she's Sprague, been brought up well. Well, Mrs. Sprague. To be respectful. Mrs. Sprague is polite with, uh. At the biting wit. wit. With the negative intent. Yeah, And with so the bite. I think that Mrs. Sprague is overall going to be able to beat her because of the malicious intent she's going to be able to backstab her she's going to they're going to be having dinner together and uh she's going to pick up the butcher knife and just come up behind her and i don't agree show her who's boss i could see why you would say that maybe but mrs sprague doesn't even have any friends nobody yeah. likes her she's and so all by herself with her son and so she's got all this time to come up with devious plots to kill people she's got plenty of things that she can do just by sitting at home she can create weapons she can uh fashion uh you know homemade weapons like that and come up with she can create traps around the house so i don't agree come to her house well i don't agree they get trapped i don't agree because i think that all she cares about is her son and she's so consumed with what he's doing that she can't take care of herself. I mean, she has to depend on him to take her out to dinner or to take her anywhere. That's why it's so weird that this uh, mysterious suitor shows up at the end of yeah, the series. Well, don't, we don't. Uh, I know that, but I mean, it's just yeah. like uh, the whole time that she's on when we see her, especially in this episode, The Lodge. Which is interesting. She's you all by watch herself. It. She's all by herself, and she just wants to. Uh, all she she wants to go everywhere with Howard. She wants to control his life and tell so him whether Mary or not Simpson. he can, whether he can or not he can join the lodge or not. He's a grown man, and she's trying to uh, manipulate his life and tell him what to do. This actress just drives me crazy. Cause you know what? She also played uh, in Bewitched. She played um, Darren's mother, and if, if you all saw that show, she was awful in that too. And she, that she well, would always looked down on my nose. point. You're proving my point, and how how strong of a of a villain she can be. She's evil. She's insidious. I think she's Mary, weak. Mary is weak. Mary, Mary is so weak. That she disappears from the entire show, <laughs> <laughs> probably cannibalized by Virgil, and she just disappears and with without any mention of her name ever again. And Mrs. Sprague, she's a very strong character. She's able to survive and get out of Mayberry, thank God. And before she's consumed by the black hole. Before she's okay. cannibalized by Virgil. But my point is... All right, I'll just is, give it to you because I'm not going to... It's okay. We have to end it, but she... Uh, we don't have to end it. It's only 14 minutes so far. Well, that's that's fine. We have three other... We have three other matches to do. Mary Simpson is weak, though. No, I don't agree with that. I think she's strong, but she's very polite. She's, and she's a girly polite. girl. She's too polite. She's so polite that she's just... She's not going to stand up for herself. She didn't stand up for herself and Andy. Well, I, I see. I don't agree with that part because I, I she, yeah, she did not say anything because she I think she thought Andy. Andy, who's a big boy, and Barney is like his best friend. At first, I think they said at the beginning that at those series, like the very, very, like totally first episode, that's, that's not they're related. Con- that's but not, now they're not. That's, that's not continuity anymore. Yeah, it's another and. Uh, Whatever. 
That's another but rough he, thing. Here's the thing. Here's he the, should have stood up thing. to no, him. No. It, it was stupid. It doesn't stupid. always have to be like that. It was stupid. We've had episodes where Helen has said something to Barney. She said, you know, get out of our business, Barney. Stop, uh, get, stop being so nosy, Barney. I mean, she stands up for herself and Auntie. But Mary Simpson does not. No, she doesn't say a she's, word. She's very weak. Come on, Sophie. Oh, well, you know I'm just gonna let weak. I'm gonna let Marco win this one, but uh, it, but here's I do want to say one thing of trivia. She was in a movie with Elvis Presley, so here's some, here's another question. and won a Golden Globe, and, and she got naked for yep. Playboy. Yeah, her yeah. name was Sue Ann Langdon. But here here's something else we should actually I she's, should ask she's you. still alive. This I'm is sorry. a very well, maybe we can get her on the show and ask her uh, what she what she thinks would happen. So I wanted to ask you. This is a very important question. What would happen if Mary Simpson got to round two? Do you think that she would be able know. to hold her own against all these other strong candidates like Andy himself, uh, the Bookie Barber, Regis? I mean, there's so many possibilities. Yeah, because she would just bat her eyelashes and look pretty and, and woo them away from uh, messing her up because she's, everybody likes her. I mean, everybody. And the only person who wouldn't like her would be uh, Howard Sprague's mother because she'd be jealous of her. Yeah. My God, if she got in, but I don't think Howard, Howard wasn't around when she was in, uh, when Mary Simpson was no. in the episode or she when she was in the series like th this would be like psycho <laughs> yeah it, because <laughs> you have this mother she's very controlling she's very evil she's definitely going to be able to beat her so okay, you well, gave it to me i'll let you have it okay next one is um governor ed who's governor ed of north carolina versus trey bowden and i'm sorry that i messed up he, I still have the correct uh, episode. He was a boy who's in Andy and Opie's New Pal. And it was season four, episode 14. Well, here's here's where I think you messed up. You watched the bullying episode. Well, he's all, Trey is also in two or three other episodes as a co-star. So. I don't know. They're, they're both blonde. I think that was another. Both blonde boys too. I don't know. For some reason, I got confused. Well, okay. What do you think is going to happen between the governor Ed and Trey? I actually chose Trey. <laughs> well, I think Governor Ed, who might be a like a former soldier. Oh, I wanted to say Governor Ed was in the episode Barney and the Governor. They talk about the Governor probably a lot. Uh, you know, his name is just. The governor. They say the governor. They, he's probably bought, brought up in conversations over the whole uh, series. But he's actually in this episode. Barney gives him a ticket and he comes down and uh, shakes his hand because he, he thinks he's not afraid to give a governor or anybody else important a ticket if they're doing something wrong. So he admires that and he wants to shake his hand. So anyway, this is episode 15 season three anyway he's older true he's also a politician and he doesn't know mayberry but either does trey trey's new to town he just moved there uh he's a very nice person and i think he's old enough to have fought maybe in world war ii so he's a former soldier he knows how to fight how and do you know well you don't know that for sure but this i has to but, be but i would think so evidence. in this uh, well this is just the way it was, and they do talk about every so often they mention the war, World War Two. A little bit. A little bit, but it's just kind of like really subtle evidence, subtle, subtle things that they say, and I think that in back then too, politicians and up to a certain point, just recently in the last since uh, I'd say since since President Obama, no, maybe, oh, President Clinton, all these uh, people who are in big um, political positions, like a governor, president, senator, 
they tended to be people if they were in the war if they were a soldier they were t- okay, tend to be they, regarded more they, they tempted to be in power more so you're that's using right. more conjecture you're not <laughs> well that's so are you fact. <laughs> i'm not i haven't even stated my argument yet. don't you think marco should be a lawyer everybody raise your hand be a really good defense attorney yeah because then then or the, a prosecutor then the maybe. opposite uh whoever that is the opposite person would would just say oh i'll give this to you marco <laughs> uh, anyway i think he's smart and he's also popular enough uh to um well i guess that doesn't well, really matter did. he was popular enough to get the governor job i mean back then it wasn't just a partisan thing like it is right now it was really based on likability and also the ability to lead and that, that you have might have ideas on how to make your state or whatever better and help people because it is a public service position where you serve the public good so my argument for trey is that he's kind of like mary simpson that he's very polite in the episode he never he never acts with insidious intent no, he doesn't. towards anybody. He's just Opie's friend. He's a very likable boy. And Andy's trying to be friends with Opie's friend and treat him just as good as he would uh, Opie. That's right, and, and that's so, what you would do too. And Opie, this is this is the funniest episode because I think this is one you're of thinking t- of uh, the one with Peggy. Yeah, but there, yeah, this is one of two episodes where uh, Opie turns into a demon. <laughs> yeah, he he does. He turns very evil. And it's so contrary to his whole manner during the whole series, where he's a very likable, supportive, creative, good person. Who's, I mean, he supports Goober, and he's really nice and. Yeah, and these really two in nice. these episodes, these two, this one and this other one with Peggy, where he's jealous he's jealous. This that's the thing, that's the common thing between those two, is he he gets jealous of a uh, Trey's relationship with his dad. And when he gets jealous, the little green monster comes out and he's the like little a, green monster. He's like a uh demon and it's it's like it's Softy. almost like you're it's almost like you're watching the twilight zone or something it's well, really there is an weird episode like that so there is an episode like that so i think well they're both even in that neither one is from mayberry and all these matches are in mayberry yeah. so that bit they're both on even they're both in, outsiders or they're both outsiders so they don't know everybody they don't know the place. They don't know where to hide. They don't know where to get food, shelter, anything. They're just, they're winging it. And I think Governor Ed, who may be an ex-soldier, but he's been around the state. Uh, and He's he, older and wiser. He's older and wiser. That's the argument you can always make. And that's why I hated the fact that all the kids got paired with the adults. Because that's yeah, the that's, argument you could always make. They're all in a line. But, but Trey, too, he's younger and could hide, too. And yeah, he could be like Chucky. <laughs> Chucky from <laughs> Child's Play. He could be the little evil. In the episode, though, I, I think that he's going to be very sneaky. And that he, oh, you're conjecturing, Marco. Well, no, I'm not conjecturing uh, about his background. I'm conjecturing... About what's going to happen in the fight based on what I know. But we don't know because do, I'm not sure, but I don't think this kid is ever in any other episode. No, he's in a couple of other episodes as a but co-star. It, but maybe he doesn't say much. Or... Yeah, he doesn't say much at all. So, so that's really hard. To... Anyways, neither is the governor. Yeah, I know. he's not. He is not in any other episode. So I think that Trey's going to be very sneaky... And I don't know. I, it, it's hard to say about what's really going to happen because in the episode, Opie fakes getting a black eye. He gets in an argument with Trey, and Trey doesn't hit him or do anything. And then Barney tells him not to fight again or else they'll 
not be able to be friends again. And then Obi fakes having a black eye. So, I just wonder if Trey would actually be able to do that. He, w would he be able to harm somebody? I don't know. Honestly, so. I think Trey's too nice, and he's kind of naive. He's too young and naive. He's, he's not naive, though. He's, no, I think he is. He's just a regular boy. I mean, we don't, we never get any sort of hint that he's naive. We do get a big hint that he's nice, though. He's a yeah. nice boy. So, I'll, I'll give you the governor because I just destroyed myself by saying that he, he might not be able to hurt anybody. Okay, next uh, matchup is Charles Foley, or Charlie Foley. He's the town grocer versus Flint or Flip Conroy. Oh, and he is a very interesting person. He's African American. He's the first <laughs> African American to have a speaking part in the Andy Griffith series. And um, you sure? Yes. Did you look that up? Yes. His real name is Rockney okay. Rockney Tarkington. And uh, the episode he's in, he plays football coach, and the episode he's in is Opie Gets Piano Lessons. It's episode 26, season 7. And Charlie Foley, this is the uh, one who's played by Frank Ferguson. And the reason why, th this is the one, he's in multiple, ep there's a Mr. Foley in multiple episodes, but it's yeah. played by him and another actor. There's also a Mr. Crowley, and then there's somebody else I have no idea who comes in even later than that. So we picked Frank Ferguson, Frank Ferguson's Mr. Foley, because he's in, he has a real big role in these uh Yeah, I picked episodes. Crowley at first. That was probably the only pick where it was uh, probably a bad choice, and because he doesn't really show up at all. Remember we talked about he's just in the window, and... You can see him. <laughs> yeah, that was Mr. Crowley. That'd and he a, couldn't he didn't even come nasty... out of the he didn't even come out of the store. And yeah. but you could see him through the glass. It was just really weird. So anyway, Frank Ferguson, Mr. Uh, Mr. Foley, he's in two ep plays a pretty big part in two episodes, Punch in the Nose, season five, episode twenty five, a really big uh part in that one. And then another one where he's a pretty big part. That yeah. was Bargain Day, episode Bargain 24, Day. season 4. I hate this episode. Right? Yeah, Marco and I did not like this episode, and it's not because of him. It's because, because Vamp, Vamp B. B. Ugh. Ugh. So I have Mr. Foley, I believe, and Marco has a Flip. Yeah, I have Flip. He's going to absolutely destroy Mr. Foley because of his athleticism. Because of his uh, level-headedness and, most importantly, his ability to multitask. We saw that directly in the episode. He's able to play piano and play football at the same time. How can anybody do two things at once? Well, you could do a lot of things at once. It just depends on how uh, you're able to multitask. And I think that that really displayed... Flip's abil ability to multitask, whereas Foley, he's a nice old man. He's but, not that old. Yeah, he's an old man, though. I don't, I don't agree. Come on, he's not. Yeah. I don't think he's as old as Floyd. But okay, well, my argument is, Mr. Foley is older. That's true. I'd say that is his one weakness. But he knows Mar Mayberry, and everybody knows him, and he owns the only grocery in town, so he can use his groceries to bargain and trade to help himself. And he also, uh, Marco happened to give me this one, uh, and I don't think he, I think he forgot that he did that, is uh, for some reason, Mr. Foley doesn't seem to have much help. There's been a couple of episodes where Oh, yeah, where he's I had helped you with the strength part. The... There's been yeah. a couple episodes where he has had help, but the rest of the time, he's by himself. So he has to lift everything and put it to stock the shelves. And cut it all up. And, like, if he's getting sides of beef that are who knows how much those things weigh, he has to lift those things and cut them up 
I mean, you're talking about hefting a huge side of beef onto a cutting table and then cutting it up and, oh, my God, and then having to put all of it away. And, uh, you know, he's the only one there, so he's working long hours. You know, he has to be there to wait on people, stock the shelves, do inventory, everything. And it's so, and clean. I mean, So he's, he's going to have a lot of muscle. Yeah, so he's, that makes him strong. That's your argument, huh? He's also very nice, and he's generous, and everybody likes him. There is nobody that doesn't like him. And but that but that the, the thing about Flip is he's very likable too. But You're using he's using the he's, argument that I gave you. But so so anyway, <laughs> um, the thing about Flip, he is, it's really weird. He seems to be the football coach, but they only show him in one episode and yeah, never see him again. Well, that's kind of new to crap. And uh, talk about but that. he's new. It's depressing. And and Mr. Foley's been around forever. He's grown up in Mayberry, so he knows Mayberry really well. And like I said, he has the only grocery store in town. If anybody knows what this is like, where there's only one grocery store, uh, where you live. And anywhere near, I mean, maybe the people listening to this, they probably live in a suburb and they go to three or four grocery stores like us. We only really go to one most well, we of the time. we used to go to like five because we used to, we used to have Lafina's and we, and, uh, he, we would have to go to Lafina's just to get meat. And so we would, but there's but only we, one store. Yeah, there's only one store, and that, I mean, it is really hard. I've lived in a, a, a small town. I was doing some work there, and there was no store in town. There's one little, uh, like a quick stop, and it wasn't even a quick stop. It was a nothing stop, and if you wanted to go to a real grocery store, you had to drive like 25 miles. So I, you know, Anyways, this, let, this let place is a lot. So anyway, he can me. use these groceries to... Uh, he help himself. He can trade. Foods? Yeah, he can trade. He can. <laughs> he, can he controls the food, so people need food. He can trade. He can. Uh, he can trade. He can. He can bargain with this wall of food. He has food. He has meat. He probably has water. He has What's fruit, he vegetables. What? He's a butcher, right? No, he has a grocery is... store. They say he has a grocery store. Okay. Safi, I'm going to destroy you right now, okay? I never got to finish my argument. Uh, I was talk I was saying, Foley is old. He's not that and old, so though. I I'm, I'm not going to finish my argument. Hurry up. It's unbelievable. We have to hurry up. Go ahead. Foley is old. He's not that old. He's not 90. Stop. Let me finish. Hurry up. Foley is old. And now let me finish, okay? He cannot multitask as well as Flip can. Because he's older. He's, you know, he's going to be, he's going to be like Andy. He's going to be like, oh my God, you're throwing two punches at once? How can you do that? And he's gonna, and he's not gonna be able to handle it. I do think, I think this is gonna be a brutal battle. I think it's gonna start out with just hands, like just punching, straight up punching. I think that Foley is gonna beat the crap out of him at first, but Flip is gonna have the endurance from being a football player, which you know football players have to have a lot of endurance. And then I think that Flip is gonna get the upper hand, and he's gonna he's gonna wreck Foley. He's gonna take the butcher knife, and he's gonna shove it into Foley's head, and then he's he's just gonna kick him to pieces, and he's he's gonna be hanging in his own his own shop. So wow. Well. Because he can multitask, he has endurance, and he's younger, which you can't knock me for that. He's younger, he's able to withstand more of a beating than Foley can, because he's older. Well, I, I guess I'll give it to you, because we can't... 
but I, uh, I think you underestimate Mr. Foley. But they're both, uh, they're both very nice people, and uh, Mr. Foley's been there longer, and he, uh, he knows where to hide, and he knows where to find things that could, he could use as a weapon. And Flip is new to the area, and he doesn't know where everything is, and he doesn't know that many people, and Mr. Foley does. So, yeah, but you, you know what I'm saying about multitasking and endurance. You know, I, but Mr. Foley, you don't think he multitask? He's got to do inventory, put things on the shelves. He has to keep track of what he but sells. But we didn't see that Submit in the tax episode. records. Uh, he has to stock the shelves. He has to know what people, like if people say, oh, I want, I want a can of uh, tomato paste. He has to, does he know where the tomato paste is? Sure he does. Does he know if they even have it? Or a certain kind of cereal. Of course, back then, when they were making this show, they did not have we all... We didn't see that, though. They didn't have all the uh, different kinds of uh, gro uh, groceries that they do now. They didn't have as many choices. Believe me, I know. And uh, there was only one we bread. It was him. Wonder Bread. And we no didn't see him as multitasking. We but saw he had, him. But we know he has to because he's the only one working at the store. But he can't multitask as good as Flip can. And we <laughs> saw that in the episode. Flip directly showed us how good of a multitasker is. He played with the Giants for 10 years. I don't know anything about uh, sports teams, so I don't know if that's, that's a good uh, or bad thing. Well, that's a good thing. So, so it's not and it's not like that year, anymore either because if you're a football ten, team, you're only with them for a few years. years for the ten most years. Part. That is a good thing. He didn't get time. traded at all. Well, and, it's different now. And now he's a coach, and at the same time, he's a master piano player. So uh, I, I really think that Flip is going to win. All right, well, let's. I'll give it to Marco. But okay. I think that Foley's a lot stronger of a candidate than... Uh, Mary Simpson and uh, Governor Ed was. I so. like Mr. Foley. He's a very nice person. He's very generous. In the Bargain Day episode, which is one episode that we hate because of Aunt Well, e. you didn't hate it. You didn't put it on your top ten Well, I should list. have because it's horrible. I just, I had to, cr I cringed when I was watching it. I, I had to even fast, like, fast forward because I was about ready to barf. Yeah. But uh, she buys all this meat. Uh, from a uh, some person who just moved into town and sets up a new business, and she her freezer breaks down, and she asks Mr. Foley if he'll store it for, her. and he he knows she didn't buy it from. I mean, if this I'm saying he's the only grocery store, so if somebody comes into town selling meat, he's gonna know it's the other person. It's a small town, and uh, but he's so generous and so nice. He doesn't even say. He doesn't refuse. He says, sure, come on over. You can store the meat in our... I'll store the meat for you. And so he's a very nice, generous person. So I hate to talk against him. So no matter what, I do acknowledge so that the other guy is more athletic and younger. The last... Our last matchup is Sergeant Vince Carter from oh the boy. United States Marine Corps. Oh. He is in the episode Gomer Pyle, USMC, episode 32, season 4. And then that's versus Reverend Tucker, who is the pastor of the town church. And the episode I chose to, uh, I don't know, watch how he worked, uh, is called The Church Benefactors. It's episode 20, season 8. But he is also in one, two, three, four, five, six other episodes. He has some kind of part in it, like Man in a Hurry, The Church Organ, Opie's Newspaper, etc. But the one I chose was The Church Benefactors, where one of the parishioner dies, leaves the church some money, and they have to all figure out how to use the money. And he plays, he mediates, and he's a very nice person, and so... And I think I have Sergeant Vince Carter, and yeah, you, you have do. Reverend Tucker. I have Reverend Tucker. I can't wait to argue for him. <laughs> well, he's a very n nice person. 
Sergeant Vince Carter, of course, he's a Marine, and he's the sergeant. So he's the one that, at the boot camp which yells at everybody and tells them what to do. And uh, he's actually, uh, this is Gomer's, like, next to the last uh, episode that he's in of this series. He he joins Vince this Carter. This is last episode. He's, he joins Vince Carter in his own show, Gomer Pyle. <coughs> Sorry. And, um, but he is a Marine. He's trained to fight, and he's strong. He's in shape. And, because he's got a, he's, he's the uh, boot camp guy. He's got to get everybody else into shape. So in order to do that, he's got to be in better shape than them. And so, uh, he's also trained to lead. So he's a leader. He's smart. He's strong. 